Hey, it's Shane with GotRom.com. This video is about hip tests for hip impingement. So specifically, we're going to talk about anterior impingement tests and posterior impingement tests. So about six years back or so, I would have tested positive and did test positive for both the anterior impingement test and the posterior hip impingement test. And I'll put in some clips about what exactly those tests look like. But if you've tried them on yourself and you've gotten a positive uh, test result, meaning, oh my God, you have hip impingement, the next step that most physical therapists or surgeons might tell you is, you know, go speak with a radiologist, go speak with a surgeon, and probably get hip surgery. So here's the, here's the, the, the catch about that. I don't anymore test positive for those tests but I still have the same bone shape. I have cam morphology. I still have a cyst in my hip. I still have label damage, and I don't test positive for those tests. So what gives? Basically what gives is I found a way of releasing a lot of the muscles deep in the groin and deep in the glutes and elsewhere in and around the hip, and therefore that clears up what is supposedly a test of bony impingement. So let's pause right there and talk for a second about what impingement actually means. Anytime that a joint is coming towards its end range, there's inevitably something impinging on something else. And most people say, oh, it feels like bone on bone, but there's all these muscles and tendons that are in between the bones of your femur and your acetabulum, so you're not actually likely being bone on bone. It might feel sharp, it might feel painful, it might feel very uh, pinchy and uncomfortable, but it doesn't mean that it's actually bone physically contacting bone it's usually muscles getting pinched and inflamed and therefore they're hypersensitive and they don't feel very good. But if you learn how to do deep tissue work on say your adductors, like with this hip stick tool or using a kettlebell or a lacrosse ball on a box, then that can really help your anterior impingement test. If you learn how to do deep tissue work on your glutes and deep hip rotators using a lacrosse ball or getting even more into the deeper parts of the hip with, say, a jackknobber tool, which we talk about in the FAI Fix program, what you'll find is that that anterior hip impingement test and the posterior hip impingement test and any other functional movement that you do, like squatting, Olympic lifting, running, lunging, cutting, anything, starts to improve because you're normalizing the tissue up in and around the hip joint. So. If you have bad bone morphology, you can't do much about that besides getting in there and shaving it down with surgery. But what you can do before all that is get into the deep, dark nooks and crannies of your hip with different tools and see if it makes that uh, pain go away in the anterior hip impingement test and the posterior hip impingement test. So, hope that was helpful. Let me know which exercise you've tried, either the a cross ball on the glutes or the jack arm on the glutes, or if you've tried the hip stick and which one is your favorite, let me know in the comments and see you in the next video. Yeah, be cool, be cool,